hello everyone. It isn't Alleluia season at the moment, but I'm going to have an Alleluia. Alleluia, we are ready to open for private prayer. All together, Alleluia. Getting down to details, we'll be open Monday morning and Thursday morning from 10.30 till 12 noon and Sunday afternoon from 2 till 4. There are a few restrictions. We can't allow people out of the tower area, but there are chairs six feet apart under the tower. There is hand sanitizer, so we ought to be fine. Um, the entry is through the south door. And I hope I'll see lots of you come to church. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. And we say together, Almighty, Almighty God, God, to, to whom, whom all hearts are open, all desires open, know, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen, Amen. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to his truth, strengthen you to do his will, and show you the joy of his kingdom. Amen. And we'll say the Gloria together. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now the collect for today, which is the second Sunday after Trinity. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive 
and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now Tony is going to read our first reading, which is from the letter to the Romans. The reading comes from Romans 10, verses 1 to 11. My brothers and sisters, I wish with all my heart that the Jews be saved, and I pray to God for them. I can testify that they are zealous for God, but they are not the way. They don't know God's way of righteousness, and they try to achieve their own righteousness. This is why they do not enter God's way of righteousness. For Christ is the aim of the law, and it is then that the believer reaches this righteousness. Moses indeed speaks of becoming just through the law. He writes, the one who obeys the law will find life through it. But the righteousness coming from the faith says instead, do not say in your heart who will go up to heaven. Because, in fact, Christ came down from them. Or who will go down to the world below? Because, in fact, Christ came up from among the dead. True righteousness coming from faith also says, The word of God is near you, on your lips and in your hearts. This is the message that we preach, and this is faith. You are saved if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and in your heart you believe that God raised him from the dead. By believing from the heart, you obtain true righteousness. By confessing the faith with your lips, you are saved. For scripture says, no one who believes in him will be ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, 
I also will deny before my Father. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and one's foes will be members of one's household. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me and whoever loves son or daughter more than we is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take the, the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, last week's reading was from earlier in this chapter of Matthew's Gospel, and the current passage follows straight on from it. You might remember that last week Jesus was sending his disciples out in pairs. And he said to them, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. All very upbeat stuff. This week, Jesus is telling them how difficult it's going to be. Just to recall a few lines. If the head of the household is called Beelzebub, how much more the members of the household? Or to paraphrase that for today's language, if they treat me badly, what are they going to do to you? It's not really motivational stuff, is it? No management consultant would recommend an approach like that. In fact, it's pretty well guaranteed to put people off. But the job that Jesus had for his disciples to do demanded commitment, and they needed to be prepared for everything that was coming their way. When I was 17, I had a boyfriend whose name was Stephen. I didn't see Stephen for literally decades. And then we came across each other. He is a historian. He deals with the history of the House of Commons. He has an office in London and he goes there a couple of days a week. I was in London about once a month. And if it was convenient, the two of us used to meet up for a coffee, sometimes even at King's Cross Station. And a coffee on King's Cross Station is not to be recommended, not unless you're desperate anyway. But I found that Stephen had three children. The youngest was Hugh. And unlike his father, Hugh was quite athletic. And he played football. And Stephen felt that whereas it wasn't his thing to go and watch his son play football, and I don't blame him at all, he ought to support the little boy. So off he went. And for the first couple of matches, things went okay. And then there was a match where it was a miserable, cold, rainy day. And Hugh's team wasn't winning. I won't say they were losing, but they certainly weren't doing as well as Hugh would have liked. And he came running over to his dad and said, Dad, I want to go home. His dad understood that, and I understand it as well. But of course, Stephen said to Hugh, No, you must stay. And you must stay because... You're staying for the team. They're depending on you. He was pointing out to his little boy, who must, I suppose, have been nine or ten at the time, that playing football demanded commitment. And I think that day, little Hugh really did start to learn about commitment, which is something 
that neither Stephen nor I had, had expected would come out of an activity like football. We didn't perhaps need that lesson at that stage of our lives because there was far more commitment about in the world. But commitment is not a popular concept these days. In our personal relationships, we don't like commitment. You often hear people say when they have a potential partner, oh, I don't want the commitment. It's hard also to get people to take on roles of responsibility. We want to keep our options open, not commit our time. We might find we have better uses for it. We don't like perhaps being in for the long haul because the long haul is unpredictable. But Christianity demands commitment and it demands a commitment to love God. Come what may and however badly life seems to be going. It also involves commitment to love other people, our neighbours. Some of those neighbours we will like and get on with. Some of them we won't like. Some of them will treat us badly. Some people might even hate us. And it can be hard going, sometimes very hard going. But there is comfort. And I think the comfort is that God understands how hard it is. God in Jesus loved the disciples. He loved them when they traveled with, them, with him. But he also loved them when they abandoned him in the cross. He loved the crowds when they followed him. But he also loved them when they bade for his blood. He even loved the hard-bitten Roman who hammered nails into his hands. That's commitment to love. And I think for us it has two sides. On the one hand, it challenges us to truly commit to love God and other people. But it also comforts us because it shows that God knows how hard it can be to do. Amen. But now we'll have the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now Tony's going to lead our intercessions. Father of all, 
we continue to pray for all those communities, families and friends who are grieving a loss. That they be consoled and strengthened by your love. Let them be empowered by your spirit to look to the future with hope and resolve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us, steer us and speak to us that we may respond steadily and carefully to the new arrangements and opportunities as they are adapted to current circumstances. Help us to be understanding and patient with each other as we struggle to reorganize our lives and livelihoods to meet each new circumstance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to be more committed in our Lord's power to bring support and help to our communities where we can, and not to allow fear or reticence to hold us back. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help us commit the time to listen. Help us to put aside our worries for a moment, to hear your voice, to look for your guidance in our moments of indecision, to respond with confidence to the whispers we hear, knowing they came from you. Help us to recognize your hand steering us deftly to steadier paths and to remember how many times you have reassured us and come to our aid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Shepherd, support and help keep safe all who are returning to work and are developing new working ways. Help them to walk the paths you have set before them, fully trusting in you. Please re-strengthen those who have needed to work throughout this time, whether in health and social care, the production of goods, education, transport, and all the other necessary occupations. Bless them and support them now in everything they do as times change. Lord, in your mercy, help us all to walk the paths you set before us, fully trusting in you, that we may act confidently in your strength, with grace and patience. Help us look to the future with confidence in the certain hope of a renewed but different way of life to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we come to the peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We meet in Christ's name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace.
the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray together. Our Amen. Father, who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to take the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth, until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. don't forget we're open Monday morning and Thursday morning 10 30 till 12 and Sunday afternoon and I hope I'll see you then say a quick prayer please for everybody who comes this week bye